So for the past two months, I've been talking about the war in Israel. But as much as the war in Israel is still on the hot topic in the news, most analysts are missing the actual war that just started in the last few days. As the war on the ground progresses and moves into its third month, the actual war with the big players, with the sharks, will be revealed in today's video. And in this war, Israel is on the crunch, it's limited in time, and it's fighting an uphill battle against some very powerful players. Right now, fighting has resumed in the north. The IDF will eventually take Jabalia, Zaytun, and uh, Sajia, which is the three remaining neighborhoods in the north. They'll move south on Han Yunis, which they'll also capture eventually in just a matter of time. And even though Hamas will inflict damage and they will do some horrible things, strategically, Hamas can't do nothing about it. It's a matter of weeks, maybe months, until the IDF clears the entire region completely and takes over. To evidence how easy it is right now for the IDF, the IDF completely lifted the siege. I know you haven't heard about this mainstream media, but humanitarian aid, gasoline, everything goes in freely right now. Because at this point, the Israelis are no longer afraid of the Hamas. It's basically over. It's mop-up duty right now. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be more casualties. But the real war now starting on the geopolitical front, which is what happens in the day after. And don't ignore the visit of Anthony Blinken, Secretary Blinken in Israel. Because in that visit, he said very clearly, look, guys, we need to think about what happens the day after. That's not by accident. And the other thing he said to the Israelis is, look, if you do not have a better plan, than what we know as the plan that we have on the table, we're going to bring the Palestinian Authority from the West Bank and we're going to import it into Gaza, unless you guys come up with a better plan. He's basically telling the Israelis, look, we're in a war right now. On the one hand, we have to play ball with Qatar, which is a huge player that's playing against Israel, supporting Hamas, and is going to be a major player in this war. It's going to try to decapitate Israel from inside with money and politics, which is their expertise. So Blinken is basically saying to the Israelis, look, Qatar is trying to push the Palestinian Authority into Gaza so they can fund it, take over it, and basically fund the rest of your destruction through money and through the Palestinian Authority. So you guys better wake up. Blinken was literally warning the Israelis, hey, look, if you guys don't come up with something better, this is going to be catastrophic for you. Wake up. And I think Blinken, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with him. They are on the clock. Inaction, lack of initiative equals disaster. This is what happens. Because the Israelis have not yet came out with a plan to solve the Gaza problem on the day after, the Qataris are pushing their agenda. And they're going to package it as some sort of a multinational Arab deal, but it's Qatar. It's going to be Qatar and Iran, because you can't have one or the other. Qatar and Iran are basically that. So Qatar and Iran has essentially gave up on Hamas as an organization. They understand that Hamas is finished. So now they move on to war number two, is get the foothold Get control, get clout, get leverage inside Gaza. Because nobody is really that excited about taking over Gaza. Let's be honest. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of headache. It's a very radicalized population. Who wants this? Not the Egyptians, not the Jordanians, definitely not the Israelis. So Qatar is basically saying, look, we'll do it. We'll happily help, right? But that help includes bringing in some patsies, which are the Palestinian Authority, and then running Gaza back into the ground by the Iranians. So look, the idea here is that unless the Israelis want a catastrophic result, they've got to do what I've been saying for the past few weeks. They have to start thinking about how to cantonize the entire Gaza Strip. It's inevitable. They have to divide it into a few different cantons, which will have their own self-government, self-police, and they will be completely independent with overarching Israeli security. They have to obviously first get rid of Hamas, but that I think at this point is inevitable. Also, the other thing is the Israelis have to kick UNRWA out of Gaza for the love of God. We all understand now exactly what UNRWA is. We all see the images. They're basically collaborating with Hamas, if not being Hamas themselves. Who are the UNRWA employees? Out of the 30,000 UNRWA employees in Gaza, except for 10 or 20, all of them are Hamas people because there's nobody there you can hire to do these jobs. It's not like people from Sweden are dying to volunteer to go and work in Gaza. So they're essentially hiring Hamas people for UNRWA. So UNRWA has been completely contaminated. It's been invaded. It's been taken over. It's been eradicated from inside by Hamas. So UNRWA is just Hamas getting money from the UN. So UNRWA schools that are being used to make rockets, all of this shit, UNRWA schools that are basically radicalizing the population, all this has to be shut down. The Israelis have to kick UNRWA out of there and work with the Americans to try and figure out a way to bring a new support system that will not 
basically uh, perpetualize the uh, victimization of the local population, but to help it grow and make something of themselves. Because UNRWA, by being Hamas, perpetualized them being poor, broke, and angry. Because for the Israelis, the whole cantonization of Gaza means jackly diddly squat, zero, if UNRWA gets to stay there, which is basically the hornetsness of Hamas. So they're going to call it Hamas 2.0, Samah, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they cannot keep UNRWA there. They got to also play ball with the Egyptians. But I've made a video and I've explained, look, once Egypt knows Hamas is fully gone and it's dead, Egypt will play ball. I made a video saying, hey, once this happens, you know Hamas is done. Once you know that Egypt is playing ball, Hamas is done because Egypt and Israel have to take responsibility over preventing from militarization. Because what happened over the past 20 years is the amount of weaponry, arms that went from Egypt through the tunnels into Gaza was massive. That problem cannot be solved without an Israeli slash Egyptian cooperation. And the Egyptians are not really keen to cooperate with Israel as long as Hamas is in the picture. So once Hamas is gone, Egyptians and Israelis have to work together to secure the border and make sure no arms go into Gaza. Now, the current plan that's being promoted by the U.S. administration through the massive push of Qatar in the background is import the Palestinian Authority from the West Bank back to Gaza where it already failed. Not to mention that it's failed also in the West Bank, which it literally controls nothing. It's a puppeteering show. Basically, these guys have zero clout, zero cachet. The Palestinian street does not respect the Palestinian Authority, and it already got kicked out of Gaza once. That is even besides the point that the Palestinian Authority and Hamas share a common goal, which is the total destruction of the state of Israel. The only difference between Hamas and the Palestinian Authority is one is driven by secular motives, the other by religious motives. Does it really matter for the Israelis if one is saying, look, God told us to kill you, or the Palestinian Authority that says, look, we think it's a good idea to kill you uh, geopolitically. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Any inaction that allows the Palestinian Authority back into Gaza is a huge, colossal failure. The Israelis must get rid of the Palestinian Authority sooner than later. Only in Gaza? No. Also in the West Bank. Trust me when I say this. The West Bank under Palestinian Authority is a powder keg waiting to explode. The same thing that happened with Gaza. The same radicalization under their nose and the explosion of a Hamas-like organization that will take over what they hold in the West Bank is just a question of time. The current state of the Palestinian Authority is basically it's being kept on life support. If you import this cadaver into Gaza, all it's going to be is going to be used as a front for Qatari money, Iranian influence, and the rebuilding of a second resistance that's going to come at Israel much harder, much stronger in 10 to 15 years. They're inviting themselves into a second horrible war they do not want to have. So the Palestinian Authority on Gaza soil is a horrible mistake that must not be allowed by the Israelis. And also, they have to get rid of it as quick as possible from the West Bank. Now look, at the end of the day, if the Israelis are smart, they can block Qatar out of this. They can make a lemonade out of these lemons. What happened on October 7th was a horrible tragedy of unimaginable consequences. And the war is horrible, but the lemonade must be made out of these lemons. The Israelis can sit back and let the Americans and the Qataris with Iranian influence to infiltrate Gaza and rebuild a second stronger Hamas within 15 years, or they can use this opportunity and wipe out Hamas and any possibility of a second nationalistic slash Islamist movement by cantonization of Gaza and thereafter also the complete cantonization of the West Bank because in its current configuration, it's just a question of time when this thing blows up. And what happened recently with the hostage deal is a huge opportunity for the Israelis and for Egypt to take over and kick Qatar out of this equation altogether. Because you see, Hamas clearly was the one who broke the ceasefire deal. They fired rockets over the Israel. They did a terror attack in the capital of Israel. They did not provide the amounts of kidnap that they were supposed to do to Israel. Basically, they broke the deal. Once that happened, and it was clear that this was a one-sided breach, the Qataris, who were the brokers who basically front Hamas, they look bad again. When the Qataris looked bad earlier, on the brink of the blow-up of the deal a few days before that, the Egyptians bailed them out, but essentially took the front. This was an exercise in geopolitics because the Qataris have been moved to the side. Now that the deal fell apart completely, Qataris have lost a lot of cachet, a lot of clout. The Americans and the Qataris are now still playing ball together, but the United States is looking at Qatar right now as almost an irrelevant factor because they couldn't rein in Hamas to give up the rest of 150 hostages, including a lot of U.S. citizens, by the way. 
So the Qataris are on the ropes. Egyptians are becoming more and more powerful in this game, which is exactly the interest of Israel. Because the Egyptians and the Israelis, they share one common enemy. The biggest enemy of Egypt is the same enemy of Israel, which is the Muslim Brotherhood. They call the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. They call Hamas in Gaza. It's the same thing. Egypt and Israel would like to see them gone off the face of the earth. Both of them are not fans. On the other hand, Qataris have tried to save Hamas. And at this point, it seems that that was a complete fail. And now they're trying to push themselves into the door like a salesman with its foot in the door, try to get in and get some clout in Gaza through their money, through the influence, so they can raise a second generation of a Hamas clone, whatever that may be. Now, the Hamas is basically on the ropes here because they lost all their major allies. The Iranians have kicked them out. The Russians are not helping. Hezbollah is definitely not playing ball. Their only measure right now to survive is to try to ignite the West Bank. Also made a video about that, explaining how that might save Hamas. If the West Bank ignites, maybe that triggers Hezbollah even involuntarily into this war. Because Hezbollah has basically turned into its own biggest nightmare, which is an institutional organization. <laughs> a civilian population-focused organization that cares more about the safety of Lebanon than the kind of religious goals of destroying Israel at this point. Especially when their overlords in Iran don't want to lose Hezbollah as a power over Israel and waste it in this war. So the interests are not really aligned. Hamas doesn't have a lot of friends in this game. They have to make do themselves, and that's not going to happen. Because look, at the end of the day, whatever friends Hamas may have had outside of Russia and China and Iran, they're long gone. What Hamas done on October 7th was so irrational, was so crazy, was so gruesome that they've proven themselves to be an irrational, unstable, completely chaotic, maniacal, suicidal, murderous organization. And nobody's going to take their side publicly or secretly. They're already active. Not even the U.S. Without speaking the whole, oh yeah, we should definitely preserve more life. The Israelis should be more careful in the south of Gaza. The, The civilian life is super important. That's all lip service. The Americans... And the entire rest of the international community understand that Hamas must be eradicated and Israel will be allowed to do whatever it needs to get it done. Everything else is lip service. That's not the point, though. The point is, once the Israelis get done with Hamas, what happens next? That war, that war is being fought right now. And the Israelis better wake up. I'll see you in the next video.